Okay, there we go. So if you don't want your 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 beautiful face uh, come up uh, black or later on, so you can turn your camera on. However, I know nobody's uh, turning on their camera. It's okay. Um, so let me share again. Right. Okay. So um, here we go. Um, Unfortunately, I have to um, right. So uh, this uh, well, uh, this unit is just basically um, uh, for the circuit analysis and central electronics. I will be covering um, the first six weeks, uh, which is all about circuit uh, circuit analysis, and then I'll uh, I'll hand it over to. To Professor Yang uh, for the rest of the course. Um, I'm not going to say what uh, Professor Yang uh, said um, in the video, so you uh, you all know by now um, you're expecting a coursework uh, which is going to happen uh, as a lab in, in Sagwala Street building and then uh, we'll give you some time um, to write your report and then um, which uh, will be 20% of your final marks. Um, one more important thing, guys, I think uh, you've been told to do the, the registration. Um, so you have to do um, the way you log in, it's, it's changed um, and it will be um, coming on 9th of March, 2020. Um, one other thing, uh, I would like you all guys to to log in to the self um, um, self registration for the online self registration, which you need to to basically you know um, uh, register yourself uh, in for for the course. Um, some of you guys that you are on. Um, Um, there was some question in the chat. I'll probably get back to it later. I can't. I can't do uh, everything at the same time. So I'll get your question later on. Um, um, probably. Uh, there's one question there. I was wondering if that's mandatory. Uh, could I use? Could I not use it? Well, I think you all have to use it. Uh, also, um, the self-checking. Uh, most of you guys, you are on visa, uh, so the attendance is very important. Um, so uh, I recommend don't forget to do it um, while you are uh, attending a, a lecture. So um, please uh, remember to do it uh, every time when you attend a, a lecture. Um, uh, Anik, uh, she also asked about the lab, um, I guess in week either six or seven, um, you'll be having a two hours lab in, uh, in the Sacramento Street building, uh, and then um, once you've done that, then you'll be uh, uh, um, you will be asked to uh, to write a report and then uh, submit it on Blackboard, and we later on mark it and give you the marks for it. Right. Okay. Uh, so for today's agenda, well, basically, I'm going to go through um, the videos, the lecture videos, which has been titled as Week One, Page One to Five. And then uh, review a couple of example. Um, um, which hasn't been covered. Right, so if you um, if you watch uh, the videos, uh, the very first point uh, we we start is just some uh, fundamental concept. Um, let 
Um, so you uh, you've seen a, a couple of a fundamental concepts, which is uh, about charge, voltage, and and current. Uh, and as you remember from uh, your uh, GCSE or A level uh, the physics course, I'm, I'm sure you've passed. Um, you uh, you know about charge. So basically, what we have uh, in our world, we have two types of charges: positive and negative. And uh, basically, uh, the energy uh, per unit charge uh, created uh, by these positive and negative charges is, is defined as uh, voltage. Uh, and by definition, V is equal to GW over DQ. Q is charge, uh, V is, is voltage, and um, W is the energy which unit has got uh, which is, mm, its unit is joule. And then, based on those, we have another uh, fundamental concept, it's called current. And simply, it means uh, the amount of charge which is flowing, um, sorry, uh, the amount of a flowing charge per second. Um, we, um, we use um, I uh, to represent current for the rest of uh, the course. And uh, by that definition, it's just basically uh, current is equal to uh, the amount of uh, charges uh, that flows a uh, per second. So Q is 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 colon, um, and dt is is basically time, which uh, the unit for that is is second. And then um, at the end, the current uh, unit is going to be uh, ampere or amp. So uh, we've got a we've got a, a picture uh, down uh, this um, page, which uh, I hope is is represent and summarize uh, whatever it's in in it's in a um, couple of sentences we we just uh, review. So if you just imagine this is a this is a wire and uh, this is a wire and and uh, electron is just um, pushing down by uh, by force V uh, so they just basically go uh, go down down the wire so uh, <clears throat> so that creates uh, the current okay so uh, the whole thing that we just uh, learned is is just in, in that uh, in that picture so basically voltage uh, makes uh, the, um, the the charge uh, go through uh, the wire and then uh, create a current. I'm not going to spend too much on this uh, on this slide because you've already uh, watched the videos and I believe uh, you know all of this. So um, um, the other uh, concept which uh, I would like to uh, to review is the power. And the power is just basically um, the energy, the change of the energy per second, which is going to be dW over dt. Again, W is, is joule, and uh, time is second. And uh, therefore, the unit for P, which is power, is going to be uh, joule. Um, one very important um, concept which I would like you all to remember it is the relationship between the power voltage and and current um, so power uh, you you've seen in the video that how uh, we, we do uh, calculate this this equation here and then we end up with a with an equation which says p equal to v r. So it is just simply say that if you want to find power, so you just need to uh, multiply the voltage and 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 current for that specific, let's say, component. Um, as an example, um, 
Um, if uh, we have a resistor, which uh, later on I'll come to um, and, and explain it, but, but just imagine, um, let's say if, if a lamp, uh, forget about resistor, if imagine if you have a, a, a lamp uh, in your room, um, if uh, we apply like a voltage about 1.5 volts and it has a current of 0.4 amps, uh, we ask you to uh, to calculate the power consumed by this um, by this lamp. Then, uh, based on what we just said, uh, we can say uh, P is equal uh, the voltage and and multiply by the current. So it's 1.5 volt multiplied by uh, 0 0.4, which makes it 0 0.6 watt. So um, um make sure that when you always do the calculation uh you write down uh, the unit at the end because without units it's meaningless and i'm really really fussy about this so if you don't include units in your calculation you will lose mark in exam in coursework so make uh, this habit to write units in front of any value uh, which uh, you you calculate. Right. So um, once we've done this uh, this review, then um, then it comes to uh, basically understanding circuits. Uh, as Professor Yang uh, he explained in the videos, we have three methods to understand circuits. Uh, one of these is the theoretical method. And the other one is the computer simulation and also uh, the experimental procedure. What we do in this um, in this unit is just uh, using basically learn the theoretical analysis and um, a very basic um, experimental method. So uh, you, you just uh, learn uh, the theory first and then uh, we put it into, uh, into test by the experimental method. Computer simulation, uh, we can't do it uh, right now, but uh, there are lots of um, computer simulators out there which you can um, use and, and Basically, when you design your uh, your circuit, uh, then um, you can um, find the values which you are interested. But because uh, um, um, because um, uh, we are at the first stage, so we ask you guys to uh, to learn the methods, uh, the th the theory first and then later on probably when you are in year three or four you'll be able to to do some use some computer simulation anyway um when, uh, when we're going to define a, a circuit we basically particularly an ideal basic circuit uh, it has to uh, it has to have three uh, past three conditions um, first of all, it has to be uh, two terminals, like uh, like a resistor, or or just again because you might not be uh, familiar with resistor. Uh, let's say it's uh, like a battery; it has just two ends, uh, so that's called like two terminal. Um, and then um, we can uh, define um, current and voltage uh, for that um, for that circuit, basically. Uh, and also, um, it cannot be subdivided uh, into uh, into a small parts. Uh, for example, uh, as a battery, battery on its own, it's just one single element so um so uh, and if you uh, take it apart uh, it, it wouldn't do its job anymore so um you can't you know um uh, uh, you can't take it as um um as a circuit basically um 
One important thing which I would like uh, to cover, uh, it's, uh, it's the passive sign uh, convention. Um, and in a very simple uh, world, um, it's just basically a, a standard um, by which is adopted universally by, by by the electrical engineer itself, and it's just basically defining uh, the current uh, go through a component and the voltage drop across uh, that specific component. Um, during this this course, it's very, very, very important. I can't say, uh, you know, um, how important it is um, that you you really have to uh, make sure you um, follow uh, this passive sign convention in your calculation. So you all have to make sure that you include that in your uh, analysis or, or just your calculation. And it's just basically simply you have to uh, define a, a polarity for the voltage and also define a, a direction for the current. Um, and obviously, you can't do it in any way you want. It has to uh, match. Um, I mean, the the the, the voltage uh, polarity and the current has to match. So you can't uh, just do it whatever you want. Um, for example, um, okay. For example, in this in this example uh, here. If you've got a, a, an element or a component, uh, so um, you define a current uh, for it, and then based on the direction of the current, you can define uh, the voltage polarity based on that. For example, if we replace that uh, element with a resistor, uh, so um, so uh, when if you define uh, that current there. And then at the voltage drop you have across it, it's going to be the positive and the negative. So basically the currents enter the, the positive side. So um, so when you when you're defining that current, it's just basically uh, it's up to you in which direction uh, you define. Um, as long as you define that direction first and based on that, then you later on um, use the right polarity for world voltage, you are safe. So uh, for example, if you, do, uh, if you define a current in that way uh, for this specific resistor, so the positive sign is gonna be this side and the other side is gonna be negative. Or if you have, if you d define the current uh, in this this direction, then you have positive and negative in uh, the given um, order. And so it's just a simply say, let's say uh, the resistor or or any component uh, do not decide about the polarity. The current direction determines the resistor voltage drop polarity. So remember, uh, define the current first, and based on that, then you'll be able to uh, to define the, the voltage polarity. Um, so, as a summary, so if you have a resistor there and you've got the current uh, from uh, left to right, then we have the voltage uh, plus there and negative the other side, so uh, if the current flows from a higher potential to a lower potential, so the voltage is equal to Ri, or if, uh, so for example, this, this represents uh, this case, so the current is just flowing from higher potential to the lower potential, so the voltage across uh, this resistor is going to be V equal uh, Ri. However, if by any chance you define the voltage in that way, 
like the positive this side and the negative the other side, but you you drew the, uh, the current direction this way, okay? So, oops. Um, oh, come on. Uh, so then the voltage is going to be a negative because the current is just um, entering from the uh, the lower potential and going to the higher potential. So the voltage is going to be uh, negative. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't make a difference uh, because the calculation, if you do it correctly, the calculation comes at the end uh, as a correct calculation. But to, to keep safe side, I, I, I recommend you uh, to define the current first, and based on the current, define uh, the voltage polarity, and then bingo, you are there. Um, once, you, once we've done that, then we get to the circuit element. Uh, this is a, a very big... Um, <clears throat> Um, well, it's, it's just a, a, a summary of uh, whatever it's been said in, in the videos, and I've just put everything in one a single slide. Um, <clears throat> when you are um, <clears throat> looking at, the, at a, the, any circuit, you might see uh, lots of elements and components uh, in, in there. Okay, and uh, we can um, we can define uh, those elements into a different uh, uh, categories. Basically, uh, either they are uh, active or they are passive. Uh, active in a way that okay uh, they. They provide uh, energy. Okay, so uh, in passive, uh, those elements or those components, they cannot produce energy. And most of the times, they just consume energy or or store energy. So um, by now, uh, let, let's go uh, and, and, and discuss the passive for the time being, uh, because we've already talked about resistor and you are more familiar with that. So as passive, uh, we, can, um, we can name um, in, that resistor, in that category is resistor, capacitor and inductors, which later on uh, we'll, we'll explain to you uh, what they are. But uh, these are just basically the the resistor. Uh, sorry, the the very basic elements uh, you you see in, in in a circuit. So these are the passives. So basically, these are the components which uh, consume energy or 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 store energy. They don't produce energy, but. In, in, in the active uh, category, uh, we can uh, subdivide it uh, into other, two other uh, categories, which call uh, a voltage source and current source. So these are uh, the parts which uh, makes your circuit alive. Okay, so it's just simply like a battery. If you have a battery or a la uh, plus a lamp, and you make a circuit, so that battery is just basically uh, make uh, the current go through through the circuit. So if you don't have uh, that 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 battery, so your circuit your circuit wouldn't do anything. Um, so you always need one of these in your circuit to to able to do something. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, so in a circuit, either you have a voltage or you have a, a current source. And um, uh, 
And each of them um, have got their own um, type. Um, <clears throat> Um, either they are uh, independent or uh, they can be a dependent sources. So let's have a look at a couple of examples which I've, uh, I've given uh, here with, with different colors. So um, this is one of the symbol which you, uh, you see quite a lot during uh, this, uh, this unit. And it's just simply uh, a representative for, for a world source. Okay, so either you have a, a circle with plus and minus sign in there or just two parallel um, uh, line. One is longer, which uh, represents the, uh, the, the um, positive uh, side and and the, the, the shorter one, uh, it's, it's, it's the negative uh, sign. And, um, and then uh, as the current source, um, again, uh, it, it just has a one a single representative and it uh, comes with a, with a circle, um, which has got a, a, an arrow inside and it represents the direction of uh, the current. Right. When um, when these two um, symbol, uh, if they represent in in a way that they come uh, in um, in a circle uh, shape, so we call them independent voltage source or independent uh, current source. And the reason um, we call them independent, it's just because uh, they, they work on its own and it doesn't depend on any other component or any other section uh, in the circuit. So they can produce, let's say, the current on its own or the produce voltage uh, as independently. Okay. Uh, however, um, um, along with uh, independent source, we have a dependent sources also. So uh, for uh, dependent sources, uh, we basically um, represent them, or you see in the circuit as oval shape. So, and the reason we call them, um, again, uh, they, they just come uh, in the same way. Uh, however, instead of uh, the circle, we have this uh, diamond shape there. And for the voltage, we, uh, we again um, have the plus and minus sign inside there. Or, uh, or for the, uh, in case of current uh, uh, dependence, current source, uh, again, we have this diamond shape and uh, the current, uh, the direction for the current. Um, this direction can be the other way around. It's just a, that it's just a, a sample. Uh, an example, uh, an example here. So um, the reason uh, we call them dependent sources is just because their value it depends on some other part of the circuit. For example, uh, in this particular case, uh, the value for this uh, dependent vo uh, uh, voltage source is Vs. However, this Vs, the value of Vs is just dependent on the voltage, which called Vx, in some other part of the circuit. Let's say that voltage Vx is the, uh, is the voltage drop, um, um, voltage drop across a resistor or, or or, or, or any, any, other, any other components, okay? And if you multiply it by, by um, the constant value of mu, then uh, you have the value for, uh, for Vs. 
or it can be uh, dependent on uh, on the current. For example, the value of this uh, BS here, this uh, voltage source, is dependent on uh, the current of of a branch uh, in in the other part of the circuit. The same story happened with uh, with the current source, this dependent current source. It's it's again uh, that the value of that source is just dependent either on the voltage or the or uh, the current of uh, some other component in the circuit. So you will see uh, these um, these sources quite a lot. Um, during this semester. Um, so, uh, make yourself familiarized with, uh, with the shape and, uh, and how they work because uh, it's important to, uh, um, to know. One of the things which uh, I, I would like to point out uh, when we talk about the voltage source and the current source, another another concept which we um, which we consider is uh, is being an uh, ideal or a non ideal uh, sources. So for ideal sources, uh, it's just um, when you um, consider, for example, a voltage source, let's imagine this is a voltage source. And if we consider that as an ideal uh, source, that means we just purely uh, think about this source as, as, as just a, a voltage source without having any internal resistance, okay? Um, however, in the real world, uh, you're never going to have or you're never going to see anything like that. So every, uh, every voltage source or current source has got their own internal resistance, which have uh, an effect on, on the circuit. But the way they designed um, uh, makes the effect of that internal resistance very obvious. Okay. So um, most of the cases, or I can say all of the cases we uh, we consider in this in this unit, uh, we uh, we look at the, the ideal cases. So that means we, we forget about any any other um, Characteristic uh, the voltage source or the current source has, uh, for example, the internal resistance. So, uh, non ideal, uh, we, we can consider those uh, later on in more advanced uh, circuit, which you don't need to, uh, to know for the time being. So, uh, most of the, the cases we, we will discuss or we will use. In this uh, in this uh, in this unit, it's going to be ideal. Right. So um, I guess that's it for today. Uh, I don't know. I have another slide. I don't know if it's going to play. So. Let me... Yeah. Okay, mm. I'll stop showing here. Uh, right. Okay, uh, so that was all for today, uh, and this was just an overview or, or the summary of those three um, three videos in the uh, in the week one folder on Blackboard. Uh, make sure uh, 
um, make sure you uh, for the Friday session uh, this Friday, which is going to be on campus because uh, I will be done with my self isolation and I can see all your happy faces uh, on that day. I can't wait to see you all. Uh, so uh, do come in. Um, our session will start uh, at two o'clock and it's going to be in Raynor Building C16, I guess. Just, just double check your uh, your uh, time anyway. Um, and don't forget again uh, to uh, to watch uh, those videos uh, week two four there. Mm. Uh, I think I can uh, go through your questions. Um, uh, what's the time? Okay, it's thirty eight past ten. Um, I'm going to finish off at 10 to 11, just to give you guys uh, some break, if just in case you have anything to do at 11. So let me just go through those questions in the chat. Um, right, I've answered to, to Annick, what is the lab? So, uh, Sami, uh, you've asked, uh, where can I find a copy of these notes on, on your screen? Well, uh, later on today, I will, um, I will upload them to Blackboard. However, I have to wait for Zoom uh, to make the video available for me. I think I'll be able to, to upload it, um, um, I think, tomorrow morning. Uh, also, I will upload the uh, the, the PDF, sorry, the, um, the PowerPoint uh, along with the video. Uh, yes, uh, Tahmid, thank you very much, your synchronous video blackboard. Um, I think I think I'll make a folder there and uh, call it as a synchronous uh, video sessions, and then I'll, I'll upload it there. Uh, and Joseph, you asked, uh, will you go through some examples? Yes, I will. Uh, later on, uh, for the coming weeks, uh, if you watch the videos, you realize that uh, Professor uh, uh, Yang, uh, he, uh, he, just, he just leave a couple of examples uh, for synchronous sessions. So that's my job to go through uh, those examples with you. Um, Alvaro, what's the what's the active um, component? So um, it doesn't really matter if you don't understand them at at the moment. You'll get used to those um, uh, those vocabulary. I can say later on, but when when I'm talking about components, it's just basically whatever you see um, uh, in a circuit. Either it can be a voltage source or a current source or um, operational amplifier later on, or even a sensor can, can be called as a component. Um, right, uh, Joseph. Um, could you go through example a stall question in the review session? Yes, we will. Um, normally, if you go through the example which we gave you uh, through the semester, also the exercises which we'll uh, upload it later on, uh, if you attend the lab and attend the tutorial, uh, I'm sure um, you will be safe and you will be uh, familiar with, with the exam. So if you just make sure you cover all of those, you'll be fine with the exam. But I think we'll have one session at the end of the semester and we'll go through uh, the past exam paper uh, to just give you some idea um, uh, about uh, what sort of exam question we might uh, ask you. Um, right. Um, uh, 
Um, Chester and Saris. Yeah, I know, guys. Um, in the timetable, it says between 1 and 3, 3 p.m. Uh, however, for the first uh, um, for the first week, uh, as um, if you look at the timetable, we define uh, just one hour of uh, of um, uh, on campus session. But you have to keep that two hours um, two hours um, uh, for this session because at some week we might need to use uh that two hours so but for the time being if you look at the unit delivery plan uh you'll see that all that session it's been going to be one hour but mind you again we might use those two hours but for this uh, week uh it's going to be at two o'clock okay so it's going to be one hour um Okay, uh, Almaro, uh, yeah, you love that mm, thing. Okay, thanks. Uh, and Annie has, uh, has commented on you. Stop saying that. <laughs> Don't be upset, Almaro, I know. <laughs> okay, so these are the questions. Uh, we still have about five minutes, no, six minutes. Uh, I would like you guys to unmute yourself if you have any question in between. So uh, I will uh, shut up and then I'll let you ask your question um, if you have any. Uh, otherwise, we can finish off uh, uh, this session. So uh, go on and shoot your question. Any question? Uh, I have to say one thing for uh, for a lab session. Um, you really have to make sure um, you attend the lab uh, on the day uh, which appear on your timetable. And you really have to make sure you attend that two hours because it's very, very difficult for us to arrange uh, an extra session um, for you uh, because we use this lab for our own uh, students, Triple uh, E, and it's quite a, a busy uh, lab uh, so uh, please do make sure you uh, you attend this lab um, at the right time um, if if you can't please do uh, let us know uh, then probably we can uh, ask you to come for the other session but again, uh, I have to emphasize, sometimes the other session might not be uh, the right day and time for you. And then you might lose the chance of doing that. So do make sure you attend the session which has been uh, given on your time. That's, that's one of the important uh, Thing which I wanted to to say. Is there any other question? No. Okay. Oh, one one other thing. Um, if you have any question regarding the unit, please do not email us because you know the number of students we are we we have for this semester for example me i have about 800 students uh, for this semester so it's very difficult for me to catch uh those emails so we've created a, a discussion board or or, or forum uh, on on blackboard 
So you can uh, uh, upload your question over there. Uh, the, the good reason uh, for doing that is that everybody can see your, your question and uh, they can contribute uh, and uh, the other students can contribute and even they can help you with their answer. And we will be checking that place um, regularly. So if you post any problem or, or any, any suggestion or any question, uh, we will be uh, answering uh, on there. So please do not uh, post um, email, uh, use email for, uh, for asking questions. Um, and yeah, basically that's it. I think, I think um, I've, I've just gone through the, the important thing. Um, um, so um, I, I am gonna finish off here. Um, you all take care and hope to see you uh, on, on a Friday uh, at two o'clock. Don't forget, this Friday, it will be at two o'clock. Reynold Building C60. Right then, guys, uh, have a good uh, day and uh, I'll see you on Friday. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.